Welcome to my first ever top 10 PC games list of 2015. And if you're wondering what the part one and two is, this one is its own self-contained list of 10 games that exclusively came out in 2015 that were my favorite that I've played. And then part two is gonna be games that came out in whatever year, doesn't matter, it's less structured, it's gonna have different style of games, and it's gonna be games that are so old compared to this that a lot of people on YouTube are younger than the actual games that are on that list. But with that said, let's move on to the list. Coming in at number 10 is Reassembly, and if you don't know what this game is, a simple way to say it is it's a 2D single player simplified version of Space Engineers. And by simplified, I don't mean dumbed down, I mean the interface to make the actual ships is very easy to learn, it's not complicated at all since it's not in 3D and it's such a blast making ships and you can make a ton of variety of ships. Now the main goal of this kind of game is just to design your ships and blow up other ships in the galaxy. You have a huge procedurally generated universe that you can just blow up ships and then you go back once you unlock new parts to make your ships even more powerful, bigger, and you can also test them out without having to spend a lot of time to see how well balanced they are. And you can go back to the drawing board when you find out how badly you suck at making ships. But it's really easy to design ships in this game. And there's a lot of variety. And you can also upload your ships to the internet through the game. You can have other players' ships come into your game to add more variety. And this ship you see here is wildly stupid. But it is massively powerful if you get close to it. Now let's move on to the next game. Coming in at number 9 is Gemcraft Shadow Chapters, and that is the nerdiest title I've ever heard for a video game. But with it, you get a great tower defense game that has achievements that are actually useful inside the game. You have skills that you get from leveling up and said achievements that you use to upgrade the skills and abilities that you can use to make you and your towers more effective inside the game. You have difficulty in which you can vary up the challenge going from the easy side where you can increase the rate that enemies spawn in how many spawn in each wave up to having every hit decrease the damage it takes from your towers which is brutally difficult and it makes me cry at the thought of using it and you have enemies that despite visually not looking very different in the ones that appear in your lanes you have a story that brings in different types of mini bosses and stuff that varies up each level along with limiting what gems you can bring in each level i strongly urge anyone to try this out especially if you don't like tower defense games because this one could bring you into the genre but if it doesn't after you play it then you just hate tower defense games and i feel sorry for you Coming in at number 8 is Hurt Locker the video game, or you may know it as Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Now this game is a fantastic game, and this is the only game that I'll recommend to anyone that doesn't even play games because it's a fun like party game, but it's a weird style because you need to have one person only that looks at this bomb that you see here on this screen, and they actually convey what's happening on screen to one or more people that's looking at a PDF file either on their computer or they could print it out old school style and they have to figure out what needs to be done from the information that you give them. And the things you do on this bomb range from simple wire cutting to complicated wires which they earn their name for that and Morse code which is actual Morse code and that's pretty insane. But don't let that scare you away. This game is such a blast. You will have a lot of great moments, great laughs, and you really only need one person to buy the game because you can family share it over Steam to all your other friends whenever they want to play the diffusing role. But with that said, let's move on to the next game. Coming in at number seven is a great success story of an early access game done right. And of course, I'm talking about Prison Architect. 
and it is a great prison management game and it might be the only one but it does a great job of introducing you to the game slowly and then eventually over time you're going to look back and be like wow how am i keeping my entire prison of hundreds of prisoners uh, from killing each other and having riots and of course you will fail by your first prison like i always did but you sell that one and you make a new prison from what you've learned by figuring out what is perfect and what goes where and all that kind of stuff and overall prison architect is such a great simple management game that's a blast even though it is about keeping prisoners who murder people happy and the ethics you're gonna have to forego to make your prison profitable sometimes can be sketchy but who cares it's a game and with the modding community making this game even better it's a no-brainer to get this game Coming in at number 6 is a game called Vermintide. It's basically a Left 4 Dead style game, but with rats. And they do have a lot of the characters that you would expect in a Left 4 Dead style game, like a tank, a hunter, a spitter, and a jockey style of creature. They do add a few of their own, like a rat with a minigun, which is kind of ranged and can be difficult unless you block it with a shield. And they add armored guard patrol in the game so that you can actually kind of stealth and have a little bit of change of pace. And the other thing that they did add was the loot system, which may not be as fleshed out as a game like Diablo, but it does service this game very well because you get more loot to go up in the higher difficulties and you can increase the odds of getting good loot by collecting in-game items that offer you a really tough challenge. And if you fail the mission though, sadly you get nothing and you wasted your life. But anyways, let's move on to the next game. Coming in at number 5 is a childhood classic of mine that was remastered for the modern age and I'm so glad that they did it because to me it still feels like it's still good and fresh and hopefully that's not my nostalgia glasses speaking here but it's actually good to its own merits. But the thing that it does right is it's a 3D space RTS which there are not many of those today. And since it is 3D, there is no real natural choke points other than asteroids and nebulas. You can kind of create your own, but usually it's more about the formations that you create with your ships and the complexity of the ships that you put in these formations so that you can vary it depending on what is needed in the game at that time. And the other cool thing about this game is the campaign. You are the last of your kind, so building ships in this game is actually important because they carry over with you from mission to mission, which could screw you depending on how missions end. But it's very similar to kind of like an XCOM style where you care about your units, even though in here it's just hunks of metal. But the campaign is really cool because of the atmosphere and the score that goes along, which brings it to awesomeness. Now coming in at number 4 is Batman Arkham Knight, which I didn't expect to be better than just a meh, especially given the way that it was released on PC. It really left a bad taste in my mouth. But uh, yeah, the combat, it is slightly improved, mostly because it has more enemy variety that can counter your godlike abilities. But once you get rid of that one enemy that's annoying you, then it's just back to being a god again, and just one-shotting blindfully, just one-handed while you do other things. Um, the combat in the car is very like the most dumbed down thing I've ever seen in my entire life but it's very simple and pleasing to people with a half foot brain and I just wanted to have my brain shut off and be Batman and have a lot of fun and also the biggest selling point for me was the Joker and I didn't even know he was going to be in this game but he makes cameos I'm not going to spoil why he's in this game but he's in it enough that he was a huge blast to have in the game I'm glad they put him in the way that he had his witty dialogue always seemed to give me a slight chuckle or a smile on my face and that was really a huge bonus for me and that was probably the motivation for me to actually finish this game and I really did enjoy it a lot now let's move on to the next game Now coming in at number three was the game that I thought would be my game of the year, especially once they announced it because Fallout 3 and New Vegas were my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time. They're such massive, expansive, immersive worlds. They have great music that I listen to forever and it actually introduced me to 50 style music and I thought they were lame, but this game said no, the music is really cool, very stylish and I love the music that they have in this game. 
Um, I also love that they fixed the combat and it made it a lot more fun, more visceral, more clean, more crisp, more responsive, that kind of stuff. Uh, I also do love the crafting that they put in this game and actual usefulness for picking up all that junk. There's The enemies are fun, the look of the game obviously is updated, the voice acting is phenomenal and I love that. Now I'm going to talk about the two things that disappointed me. The first one, which is the settlement, isn't a huge deal breaker, but they really failed in this respect. It is, It was optional and it felt optional because they didn't put a lot of effort into it and you can say they did, but they didn't because I'll get onto why they didn't. Um, but the UI is just terrible for that, especially on mouse and keyboard. It's clunky, it's weird to use, it just takes forever, and the snapping of parts hardly works half the time. You barely have any control of how you can place things, and the variety of things you can place is utterly fail, like hashtag fail status. I'm not even kidding. I mean, you would have thought that a very simple thing would be a wall with the window, and scaffolding to hold you know if you want a balcony but that's like those are some of the complaints I could list a bunch of them but all of them were fixed at least for the variety of objects by modders I love you guys so much and now I understand this is the first Fallout game that I have modded one of the first games I've modded this extensively and I really do love the modders for fixing that but it also brings an issue that the UI is even more garbage because when you have thousands of items now, if you want to try to find the one thing that you know you want, just put a search bar in there and hopefully that will be fixed once they come out with the official mod kit. And I guarantee it will. And then settlement complaint will be completely gone. And But that's not it. The biggest disappointment for me was overall the questing and world of this game. It didn't have the awesome vibe of Fallout 3 in New Vegas, and I think it has to do with the voice acting of the main character. And I was even talking before this game came out to a couple of my friends, and was worried that it would screw the game up. And to me, it kind of did, because the dialogue options, they are limited, and I don't want to say they're dumbed down. I know why they had to limit it, because having 10 options for every single NPC character that you talk to with voice acting is just absurd. Uh, but I would have rather had more than just yes, no, question mark, sarcastic. And the questing was a fail, especially for me, a Bethesda game, the side quests are usually the most fun, and especially Skyrim. But in this game, the only side quest I remember was a boy locked in a fridge, and I thought this was going to be some cool quest, and you just turn it in, and it's like, yo, just kill a bunch of guys, and that's it. And that was kind of a fail for me, and that pretty much explains a lot of the side quests. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm complaining, but that's because I wanted this game to be the best game ever made in the history of mankind, like Skyrim was for me. Uh, but I really do love the way they, re they redesigned the power armor and everything to do with that. I applaud them for that. With that said, let's move on to the next game. Coming in at number two is Killing Floor 2, and it's a game that's still in early access. And the funny thing is, I put more hours into this game than I did in Fallout 4. And all this game is, is a co-op horde shooter with no loot, no real progression other than leveling up your character. But that's not enough to make this game worth hundreds of hours of replay. But it's just so... I don't even know how to describe it. It's just so pleasing to look at. With all the blood and guts, and sometimes when you get in slow motion, it just is very poetic. And that might sound really creepy, but it's really cool. It's visually appealing. The guns feel powerful. It's the closest I could describe it is like Doom level of like, this is a fantastic game that doesn't need anything other than enemies and your guns and you shoot stuff. And that's all it really is. But it does it so well, and it's not even out completely. It's only got 7 out of the 10 classes, only 2 bosses, but it's still freaking amazing. And I applaud Tripwire for making this great game. Drum roll, please. My game of the year 
is a game that I played over 30 hours alone just in the beta and I knew I was going to fall in love with it. And of course, it's Star Wars Battlefront. No, I'm just kidding. It's Rainbow Six Siege. And for me, this wasn't a shocker. I didn't expect it to be my favorite game, but I knew it was going to be a good game because it, this is just a game that oozes my tactical teamwork kind of style of game. And what's even more of a surprise is it's Ubisoft. You know, the developer that doesn't make anything original and has unfair business practices. Yeah, they published this game. But the developers probably pushed them to make the maps free, which, man, I love that in any game that I play. And the operators are technically free. They're about 25 hours to unlock per operator to from how much I've played, that's how much it takes to get the in-game currency to unlock them. Or you can pay money for the season pass or each one individually. They're about five bucks. But whichever route you take, it's fair in every single way from how much I've played this game. And I applaud them for that. And the only thing that costs money is skins for your weapons. And who cares? They have enough free ones that some of them are actually better looking. Now let's get on to the actual gameplay. Now the game has operators where they each have their own special ability and almost every single one of them except a few are actually all useful in every scenario um, and also they have weapons that are unique to them with some allowing to have multiple weapons shared between classes but the way that this game has tension is real and I love that for it. I mean, the only other game that I've played is Insurgency that's had this level of tension and teamwork. But this one is more close-knitted maps that are really greatly designed. And I'm amazed by that. The destructible environments in this game is actually useful, unlike some games, <coughs> Battlefield, where it's just a spectacle. Half of the tactical nature of this game comes from the destructible walls and windows and stuff. There is no safe place unless you barricade it up to protect yourself, but then some classes can destroy those barricades. And the sound design in this game, again, beats Battlefield, and I don't know why I'm picking on that game. Maybe because the last few have sucked, but... The sound design in here is useful because it gives you information. Information of an enemy running above you, below you, you can hear the crackling of glass, the snapping of wood, the barbed wires, metal, anything. You can hear people reloading, you can hear them shifting their weight from standing, crouching, or prone. And you can even hear the armor on them actually like buckle. It's like if you pay attention. This game you can really sound whore if you want to. And that's pretty cool for that. And because it gives you information. And then you do have one life, which I know some people that's that's a deal breaker because they suck and you die. And you just don't you you want to be the one killing and doing lots of action and nonstop, you know, whatever. But even when you die, at least for me, it's sometimes fun. Not only does it relieve you of stress of having to actually do good, but when you do die, you can still help your team out by spotting with cameras or your drones, depending on if you're attacking or defending. And when you're defending, you do camp a lot, but that's because you're defending a location or a hostage. But the attackers know you're camping, so you never get frustrated when they are camping a spot out like in every other game. Because it's encouraged, but not always encouraged. Because if you do camp week and we find out where you are, you can be screwed. So you always want to try to be mobile in this kind of game. And with the classes being almost perfectly balanced in terms of not having one class be more useful or one being completely garbage... Shields are still kind of a little OP, especially 1v1. It's the only class that can 1v1 anybody and win, especially if they don't have C4. Now, the only complaints that I do have for this game is that since it is you play, the servers kind of can crap out on you occasionally and disconnect you, which does suck. Steam would be so much better, but as long as I can play this game, I don't care. 
And now with my top tens list officially done, and I've spent way too much time making this video, hopefully somebody finds some enjoyment out of this for whatever reason. You should thumbs it up or thumbs it down if you think that Rainbow Six Siege is stupid um, and you think there's a better game that deserves Game of the Year. Before you type Witcher 3, I didn't play that game. I know, I know, I'm so bummed that I didn't. But I'll get around to it for 2016, and it'll, it'll, it could be my game of the year for 2016. Now I'm going to close out this video with a clip of Rainbow Six Siege. And I'm going to set it up and say that we were, our team was so far ahead that we're like, everybody go shields, and let's just all breach together at the same time. Let's just say it didn't turn out so well. Breaching. Alright, right. get in there, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Alright, do it. Down. Oh, oh. Hostiles have shot the hostiles. Oh, did it? <laughs> well, that, that ended the quickly. Big C4 kill? Thing and he, killed, he killed literally our entire team. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was their free victory because we let them win. Lol.